uh, like a music camera. So it's designed for showing like a close-up of a band. Oh, and okay. So it's got a wide-angle lens in it. Okay. And and you want to get close up so that the because um, this is all a mic on top. Yeah. And so that you get good sound. Interesting. You know? So so um, Lucas, I'm going to have you stand right about here. Okay. And uh, then we'll, then we're in. Sure thing. And we can just talk to each other, but. But this is Lucas, and uh, he heard my question. He's interested in uh, answering it. So what yes. do you think happens after this life? That is a uh, very interesting question that I've not thought too deeply about, uh, especially recently. But uh, if you're asking me in this present moment... Yeah, where, where would you... Uh, I think... Um, I don't know. I think, I think that's it. I think it's lights out, and it's just kind of blackness. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Do you um, hope there's more than that, I guess? Uh, well, I would like it. I you would seem like, like it. You like a friendly, cheerful kind of guy who maybe likes life. I do. Know? That's it. So. I, um, <laughs> I would like there for to be a... More uh, life, I, right? I would, you know, appreciate that. Yeah. But um, I'm okay if there's not. Okay. Because um, I'm definitely in the philosophy that, you know, you got one life and, like... Live it to the fullest. Exactly, exactly. It's like I, I, I'm 21 right now, and it's like I feel like I've already been living a pretty good life. Of course, you know, things yeah. can change any minute yeah. now. <laughs> uh, right, but, uh, you know, I, 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 I would be, I, I want to live a life that makes me satisfied at the end of yeah. it. Yeah, no matter whether there's more or not. Exactly. Yeah. Now, do you, did you grow up with a religious I did. upbringing? I did, background? actually. Yeah, I did. Uh, both my parents are... Uh, raise me Catholic. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm con confirmed with the Catholic Church. I volunteered there a lot in high school. Uh, and the only reason why I've kind of fallen off is one, because I moved to college and lost the time to devote myself. Yeah. And also because of COVID, uh, you know, I just like hadn't had the opportunity to go to church or anything like that. And also three, uh, you know, now living on my own, it's like I, I kind of form my own beliefs and, and yeah and you have catered. to kind of take ownership of the faith or, exactly, or yeah. let it lag I guess yeah no so I, I've kind of uh, you know tweaked you know things and, and, and the teachings in, in, into my own life and so it's like I, I do consider myself to be religious right now but I don't I don't agree with or, or partake in all of the practices that the churches do uh -huh. and, and, I, and I do with some of the others you know okay yeah do you um, did you go to like a Catholic high school or? A uh, no. So uh, you had the confirmation. Yes. And <clears throat> what that's what, three years of study. I guess what I'm asking what I'm asking is, do you feel like you have a good grounding in what Catholicism or Christianity actually teaches? I would like to think so. I like to think so because I, I I think uh, I have a firm belief on the the philosophy behind it, uh -huh. that of love thy neighbor and you know treat yourself as uh, treat others as you would want to be treated yeah uh, that really like fundamental belief um, I know that there's a lot of uh, you know theologists I I, I I do watch some videos about like theologists talking in depth about like religion and the scriptures and there's so much more to it that I didn't even yeah. know about yeah. the other day or not the other day like a few months ago I watched a video talking all about the book of revelations and the biblical apocalypse which I knew nothing about prior to that point. Okay. And it was it was like it was really crazy to me. I just yeah, there's I, some there's some crazy language. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, and also just not to mention imagery all, and yeah, really yeah. all of the just one-off Bible stories and stuff like that. I didn't know about like Job, and oh. I learned about that like uh, yeah. over this past summer. And and all it is is like I just I have a very curious mind, and mm -hmm. I love like going deep into topics I don't really know too much. Yeah. About. One of them being the Bible. Okay. Yeah. So it sounds like you haven't really read the Bible, but you, you're exposed to, to some of the stories yeah, yeah. from it. Of course, I, I you know know all the big ones, your Moses, Jesus, uh, uh -huh. Adam and Eve, and all that stuff. But you know, there's a lot of like really smaller ones, and in, in like you know, Numbers two or whatever yeah. that I, I don't. Know I've been reading yet. lately in uh, Judges about Samson. If you're familiar not, with the story of Samson and Delilah, I'm not familiar with this. Crazy story. It's, it's hard to. It's hard to fit it in with a Christian world view. Okay. I mean, it, it yeah. So, well, that's another thing is that it's it's very interesting how there's actually a lot of conflicting ideals within the Bible. Yeah. You know, like one 
verse will say one thing and then it's conflicted by another thing. And that's because the Bible was written by so many different people across so many different eras. You know, it's it, this wasn't like one person's, you know, account and then beliefs or whatever. Yeah. Like and so, I, I've actually learned, um, so, so that was my concern is does the Bible, so the Bible's written by many different people. Do they agree with each other? It doesn't seem like and, um and so there's what's called paradoxes in the Bible, which which is different from uh, what's the other P word? Uh, anyway, uh, a, a conflict, you know, yeah. where it's saying two different things. But a paradox actually looks like it is disagreeing until you dig deeper. Okay. So, so for example, uh, I mean, the Bible says, you know. Um, That we need to that we need to take care of ourselves, and then it says we need to. I can't remember how exactly it says it. Take care of ourselves, but also allow others to. You know, every person should take care of themselves, but yeah. we should take care of one another. Right. Like, okay. What is it saying? We're responsible for ourselves, or or not? I mean, that's probably not a good example. But, or or the idea of the you know the Trinity. You know, God is three. No, God is one. Right. Okay, yeah. that's, is that conflicting? I, uh, e even though having been raised Catholic and, and taught all of that stuff, to this day, I am so confused as to whether or not Jesus Christ was a, a person born of flesh, or is he yeah. uh, a spirit that is God, you know? The answer is yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've learned. Is he is he God? Yes. Is he man? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, what do you think of Jesus? What do you what do you think of his life and teachings? And, I mean, I know he's the one who said, "Love thy neighbor." Right. So, yeah. And, uh, and so, actually, that even came from other teachers. You know, he just right. emphasized it. I mean, I um the uh they say that the the two people who have imp impacted human history the most are Jesus Christ and Adolf Hitler. Oh, wow. I find that very interesting because Jesus Christ is what many believe to be the purest, best person to have ever lived, and then Hitler is the worst person to have ever yeah. lived. And I just find it so interesting how both sides of the spectrum can have such an impact on the world. Yeah. And, I, I, and, and Jesus is that, you know, I... The, the, the debate lies in whether or not he was the son of God and it was yes, holy it because there's, it sure a lot of, yeah. uh, there's a lot of evidence to support that there was a man named Jesus Christ who lived at that time and died at the time that the Bible says he was yeah. and whatever. So it's like a historical person. It was, yeah. yes. He was, he was a historical person. And, and, and it, with that in mind, whether or not he was a holy being or not doesn't change the fact that his teachings have they had a massive impact yeah. On Western history, at least, yeah. and I think that just goes to show how true his teachings are, or at least how our society has modeled itself after his teachings. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. I, I like. I'm supportive. You know, I, yeah. I, I agree with most of his teachings. Yeah. And, and right away, even his, you know, eleven of his twelve apostles, well, ten of them, one of them betrayed him. Right. But the others gave their lives. They, they became martyrs, yeah. you know? Yeah. And one died of old age, the one that wrote Revelation, John. Um, but the rest of them gave their lives. And would they give their lives for a lie? So the people that were closest to him apparently believed in him. Yeah. You know, to the point where they're willing to die in the same way. Right, and this know, was even before died. Christianity was adopted by Rome. Oh, yeah. This was, uh, uh, I can't remember where in the Bible, but somebody once referred to it as a cult at that time. Yeah, 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 they they called it the way. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Yeah. yeah, and it wasn't Judaism, so right. it, it was something new. Yeah. yeah. What do you think Jesus did? Like, what, what do you think the Bible teaches was the purpose for Jesus dying on the cross and all of that? Like, well, from, so... From, from your background. Here, right, that's that's also I'm interesting. quizzing your... Uh, <laughs> Your, your catechism. <laughs> they say that he uh, he died for our sins, and yeah. I uh, I'm still a little vague on exactly what that means. Right. Uh, I I to my understanding that means that humans after his death can now sin without punishment. Okay. All because he sacrificed himself. 
Yeah. And uh, I just, uh, I'm really, I'm That's a little, a little sketchy, right? Right. I'm a little confused <laughs> on how that works, you know? <laughs> yeah. So now if I went out and jumped in the road for Lucas uh, and I said, I'm going to die for Lucas's sins. Don't do that. It wouldn't work, <laughs> right? right? Right. So it had to be Jesus that did it, if that makes sense. Okay. Like in other yeah. words, he could die and, and his death didn't just pay for one other person's sins, it paid for everybody's, right? Yeah, yeah. So this is why the question of is Jesus the Son of God is so important. If he's the Son of, if he's a person, the Bible teaches that all people are sinful. Yes. And all deserve to be, you know, we don't, we're, we're not rewarded for our sin, we're punished for our sin. Yeah. That's, you know, God's justice demands there must be a punishment for the crime. So if Jesus was a person, just a person, he would not be perfect. He would have to pay the penalty for his own sin. Yeah. But the Bible says he was without sin, and and uh, and so so in that respect, he could he could take the punishment for someone else, right? But if he's just a person, also, but a perfect person somehow, then he could take the punishment my punishment in my place if God is willing to make that exchange. That's, that's where God's mercy comes in. He's willing to make that exchange. Right. But he, he couldn't do it for everybody. But if he was God's son of equal value, infinite worth equal to God, he would be worth more than all the sinners that he dies for. That makes okay. And so that's, that's the reason is why you know, Jehovah's Witnesses, for example, they don't believe Jesus Son of God, so they think you got to go around and earn your yes. salvation, yeah. and maybe in addition to what he did. You know? okay. yeah. um, and that's why you know, Christians debate them because, yeah, right. it's pretty important that, that Jesus is who he says he, yes. yeah. he was. Yeah. That's the foundation yeah. of Christianity. Yeah. And so, yeah, so it's, I mean, I, I'll try and make this brief because I don't know how much time you got, but very quickly, like, if you think about it, God would be a perfect being in all aspects of his character, right? Yeah. Perfection means you're perfect in every way, not just one way or this way. Right. So God would be perfectly patient, perfectly kind, perfectly loving, perfectly merciful, but at the same time, he would be perfectly just. Yeah. Now, here's a con contradiction, I think, is the word I was, was looking for. I, yeah. the Bible have contradictions? Um, so can God, so us being fallible, sinful people uh, and, and having broken God's rules and God says there must be a punishment for it, could God, okay, God, God in his love, if God is perfectly loving, he must let us go free, right? Yeah. You're, you know, or merciful, perfectly merciful. But if God is perfectly just, then we must pay the punishment. Yeah. So which is it, mercy or justice? Right. See what uh, I'm I, I, this is this is something that many philosophers and scientists and even theologists debate, and I, I always find it very interesting. Uh, I watched an interview with Neil deGrasse Tyson, the uh, astrophysicist, and he said, you know, like look at the the, the Bible definition of God says he's all, all powerful and all loving. Yeah. And so the age old question of can God create a boulder so strong that not even yeah. And if yes, if, if, if he can't lift it, then that means he's not powerful enough to lift it. Yeah. If he can't make it, then he's not power enough, powerful enough to make it. True. Yeah. And if he is all-loving, then why is the world filled? Why is hurricanes and all of these yeah, why is, and why is stuff like evil? that? the problem of evil? And, and yeah. at least the first question of, you know, can he create a boulder strong enough, yada, yada. There just isn't really an answer to that. That's apparent. Unless you consider Jesus the answer. Like, oh, God. Jesus didn't, you know, like, he didn't exercise, like, he did some miracles, but physically, yeah, he couldn't lift the world. Right, yeah. So, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, so, my interpretation of God, and I like to think that this is very different from what most Christians believe that I I believe in like aliens and cosmology that the universe started with the Big Bang and that humans evolved from like 
when there's fish and people and then chimpanzees or whatever. Well, evolution. Which is, con yes, which is contradictory to the Bible. But I, I, I justify it by saying that this universe is so complex. And, 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 and when you look at not, not just a human's molecular structure, but also like these plants and the sun and the sky and how all of it just works without chaos and, and how, you know, the universe could feasibly just break with a snap of a finger. But what's keeping that all together is God and what who is pulling the strings and making things work is God. Gravity and, and heat and, 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 and it, all these like fundamental things that make our universe work as it does yeah. is God's creation. Okay. And yeah. So I think God created the conditions for us and the universe to exist. Yeah. Uh, because without that kind of entity, none of it makes sense. Yeah. I don't believe that any of this just happened, you know, out of coincidence. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, and like the physics doesn't have an explanation as to, well, how does any of this happen? You know, the one question is, you know, we understand or at least our current model of physics understands that the universe started with the Big Bang. And one common question is, how did the Big Bang happen, and what was before the Big Bang? Right. And my answer to that is God. Okay. So yeah. you believe in God, but not, but, but you're saying probably lights out after we die. Yeah, yeah. And that's okay. what I'm saying. Of that's like, a little unusual. It is. Because, uh, yeah, it is. most people, they kind of go hand in hand. Right. And, yeah. and that's what I was saying with, like, I, I, I really just, you know, picked and choose what of this religion I, I, I believe in, and I, I molded it into, into my own beliefs and, and discoveries along the way. Yeah. You know? Are you a college student? I am, yes. What's your major? Filmmaking. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah. So you have an outside interest in, like, say, astrophysics? And things like I that. do, I do. I know I know. it may sound like I'm very, you know, uh, uh, yeah, like, well-read on that I mean, stuff, are, you, are you familiar with the fine-tuning argument No. your life? No, I mean I might be, but I don't know. If I'm <laughs> the way they the way they describe it to us laymen is um, imagine yourself in in a room, and actually, I think I first heard it a room full of say a hundred dials, where each one has to be like there's a there's mi really a million settings on each dial, and each one has to be finely tuned. For example, and and I've read a book recently on astrophysics. And like even the um, the force of gravity, right. if it wasn't, if it was just a hair more or less, this world would have been sucked into a black hole yeah. and wouldn't exist, you know. And so there's like a hundred dials. Now they're discovering more and more yes. dials, and all of them have to be perfectly tuned. And the way they describe it is the chance of that happening is like 10 to the how many billion power and they say there's there's more the number is greater than the number of protons in, you know, yeah. in the universe I mean it, I mean like it's to the point where it's you know I've, I've always thought I mean the Bible says faith is what pleases God right right and so I've always thought well we'll never be able to that God exists yeah. or that there was an intelligent creator. Um, but something like that is, I consider it true. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I think it's it's not just like a reasonable argument. I think it's totally unreasonable not to believe that there was some kind of an intelligent creator yes, exactly. putting yeah. everything together. Right. It's like this universe is, is just like you said, it's too working and fine tuned. Yeah. And like everything yeah. works in tandem. So then the question is, do you believe God wound up the watch and set back and you know because you said he gave us all the conditions right. for life or whatever. So you're 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 asking so if this is like the is, seventh is, draft is God universe. no, but more is God so it, so I guess there's deism and there's theism. Right. Deism believes that God wound it up and set back to see what's gonna happen or watch what's happening. Theism is more God is intimately involved with his Okay. So um, what do you think about right. that, those options? So I've always been operating under theism uh, because once 
I think deism makes a, lit, a bit more scientific sense. Because theism, so it's my belief that God controls the entire universe as a whole, and not just the humans that live on it. Yeah. Which is not what the Bible says. Uh, uh, and to well, me... Well, it doesn't say it in words, you know, like in modern language. Right. Everything's like yeah. metaphor. But it, it talks about yeah. God being not just the creator, but the sustainer. Yeah. Actually, it, it says even Jesus being... So the difference between Jesus and humans is that Jesus is not a creation. Yeah. He's a creator. Okay. And so he's the son of God, not a son of God. You know, like yeah. anyone who becomes a Christian is considered in God's family. We're adopted, you know, but right. we're not, we're not part of the, we're not the creator. We're a creation, right. you know. And so it actually says Jesus was there with God in the beginning. Through him, everything was made and everything is held together by him. So in other words, he's sustaining it. Yeah. So like what, what is it that makes the law of gravity lawful? Yeah, you know, exactly. like what keeps it? Who made that law? Yeah, and, and, and why and, is? And, yeah, it's um, there's another uh, the philosophy behind mathematics. Like math was created in ancient civilizations to just count how much livestock and stock made. was it created or discovered? Though? Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It was. It ended up being the coincidence that math is what makes our universe go. You know. Right. It, it, the, the same system that's like one cow, two cow, three cow, was then evolved into calculating the, the rate at which the planet moves yeah. and, 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 and confirming gravity and, and the existence of, of, you know, dark matter and yeah. all that stuff. And it's, it's, so if math works, if, if, if math can prove such massive things about our world, how did it come to be? Yeah. You know? And it even, you can use math in something like uh, evolution. Right. The problem with evolution is that there is not enough time in all of history for things to have evolved. Okay. Like, the more they're getting into the, the chemical, the biology, right. the chemistry of it all, and how complex DNA and genetics are yeah. um, like for for new information to be added into the evolutionary line, the odds of that happening are so like statistically you can prove that evolution couldn't have occurred. Okay. And um, and and the most you know the biggest argument is like what could have brought the first life. Yeah. And so they talk about even the most simple single cell animals. We can't, you know, we're supposedly intelligent, but we, well, we can't replicate them. And right. We can't get them started. There. Yeah. And it has, it, it's like a watch that has all these moving parts and they all have to be in place at the same time and everything has to happen at the right time. Right. And for life to replicate itself, you know, like it's not just something has to, like, you know, what, what defines life? Well, does it replicate itself? Yeah. You know? It, 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 that is so, so interesting, and, and coupled with the fact that we can't agree on a scientific definition of life. You know, we don't know what is, technically, we don't know what is life, really. Right. Where we keep looking for intel intelligent life across the universe, but we don't really know what we're looking for. <laughs> How right. do we define intelligent life? And what you said of, like... You know, uh, the, the the first single-celled organism that would eventually evolve into humans. Nobody knows where that came from. Right. Like where life. So uh, yeah, I'm, I, it was interesting you mentioned aliens. Yeah. That, that is what people are turning to. They're starting to realize Darwinian evolution is not valid, and so they're saying, well, it must have come from another planet. Right. Right. There is a theory that the the the, the first cells to have lived on Earth were living on like an asteroid. Yeah, but then you have to say where that comes from. Exactly, and, and my answer to that is God. And then there's another theory that um, we were all cells living, lifeless cells living in a pond that was struck by lightning, and then that energy from the lightning gave life to the cells. Right. The obvious question is, well, how did that lightning bolt so happen yeah. to hit the water? And my answer to that is God. Right. Yeah. It's it's uh, I, I think I think that the two theories can live together. Um, 
back to Neil deGrasse Tyson in that same interview, it was one of those like atheism versus theology type things. And, and he said, like, the reason why I don't believe God is because there's no, there's no evidence. Like, we've been following the evidence, mm -hmm. and, and, and I've not found God. And if I were there in that room, I would say, do you think, like, science is relatively new. Mm -hmm. Do you really think you can find God so easily? Right. You know, like, through science and discovery? It's like, it's, you're looking in the wrong way, in the wrong yeah. places. You know? Well, what he means when he says that I can't find evidence is we can't find it by our, within our perimeters, yeah. parameters. It's, it's by our standards. Yep. So, and our standards are we have to discover God. Yeah. And really what the Bible is, is God's revelation. That's where the word revelations came from. We're revealing the, you know, the future, but then also revealing the past. So all of the Bible... So I, as a Christian, would consider all the Bible to be God's revelation to man of himself. Showing, oh, okay. Revealing himself. Interesting. So, and I don't think that it's designed to be necessarily a scientific, you know, like there's other ways of finding knowledge, which, you know, we just, you know, the scientific method, yeah. It's, yeah. It's an ordered universe, so we should be able to see some patterns here. And right. that's what we find yeah. when we, you know, conduct experiments and things like that. So, I believe science is only possible because there is a God, and there is a, right. there is a designer. Yeah, so same since there's a design and there's patterns, yes, we can come up with some rules as to how things normally happen. Right. But yeah. would God be able to step outside of what's normal and do a miracle? Yes. Uh, okay. Why not? Well, let me ask you this. Yeah. The Bible tells of a lot of miracles that happen mm -hmm. through whether God or Jesus, like Jesus curing the blind man or making fish and bread out of or multiplying yeah, yeah. fish and bread and and one question i commonly hear asked uh, by atheists is like well these those miracles have kind of stopped since the bible yeah so do you have so, so uh the bible actually is, when you're talking specifically about jesus miracles uh -huh. it explains why he did the miracles uh, i think there's many reasons why he did them but one of the reasons was to show his authority to validate his ministry and to show his authority. Right. So, if that's the reason, then yeah, I mean, I'm not Jesus, so, <laughs> right. you know. Okay. <laughs> so, so only a uh, second Messiah would be able to make those kinds of yeah, yeah, I would think yeah. so, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, the Bible teaches Jesus is going to come twice. Right, yeah. And that's why the, the Jews have such a hard time accepting his first time because he came as a suffering servant yeah and he's supposed to be their liberator and their hero right and right savior. so so the second time he comes he's going to come in power and glory and strength yeah, yeah. um symbolized by riding a white horse you know like not, not a born in a manger yeah you know yeah and so will he have to do miracles to prove who he is i think we're just gonna know yeah you know okay but yeah so yeah um <laughs> But yeah, and, and so his miracles were limited, you know, I mean, he did Relatively, them, yeah. and so they showed his compassion, okay. um, they yeah. showed what was important, they drew a crowd, a lot of times, yeah. Yeah. a lot of times he, he would perform miracles and then he would start to teach, and lot of, you know, so he had these crowds of people around him. Yeah. So, yeah, I think there's multiple reasons for those miracles, and, and even the, um, the disciples, as they went on in ministry, they performed some miracles too. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, and it would make sense that uh, God is showing their authority. You know? Yeah. Because because uh, actually much of the Bible is written by them. Yeah. So yeah. As a matter of fact, Jesus didn't write any of it. Oh, fun fact. You know, my name's Lucas. Mm -hmm. I was born on Christmas, and oh, so cool. I'm named after the book of Luke. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Just a little fun fact. Yeah. Myself, yeah. So um. Yeah, so I, I think that's really cool that you believe in God. I mean, that's yeah. Cool. Uh, I do get in a lot of conversations with people that just, you know, I'm just trying to give them reasons why I even believe in God in the first right. place. Right. Yeah. And uh, so then, so then it's like, okay, if God exists, you know, what you're having a hard time with is believing is that. I guess I'm. What would be the ne what, what would be the hardest thing for you to accept? I guess or a stumbling block to 
say Christian faith, you know? Uh, so uh, the, I, 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 I know the answer. I'm trying to put it into words. Um, so, uh, okay, so for instance, um, do you know about the, the Turpin family, the Turpon family? They were in the news a few years ago. No. <laughs> this, this was a, a, a horrible event. So the Turpon family was this, it was a, a father and mother. They had, I think, 15 kids. And all 15 kids were basically imprisoned in their home, refused of enough food and education outside, social life, all of that stuff. Uh, the oldest one, when, when the police found this, the oldest one was 22, uh -huh. and the youngest one was two. And uh, the, the, these parents were very abusive, and, uh, yeah, abusive and whatever. Yeah. And the entire time, they were using passages from the Bible to justify their actions. Oh. Now, of course, I know you would never do that. My parents would never do that. A majority of the Christians, I think, are good people. Mm -hmm. But the idea that the Bible can, and this is why I said about how the Bible can be interpreted in so many yeah. different ways. Yeah. The idea that so many people follow this thing that actually has a lot of really negative, it, it messed up, according to our modern society, messed up things in it, is, 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 is a little alarming to me at times. Yeah. Yeah, like, uh, the Bible, like... I can't name the, the verse off the top of my head, but I, you know, r recall some instances a, of, of, like, a woman is, like, a man's property in marriage and has the right to, you know, refuse yeah. her of, you know, ch children or something like that, or, like, yeah. something like that, yeah. And it's, so it's just hard to accept the Bible as God's word, I guess. Yes, yes, because there's, yeah. there's a lot of really alarming things in there, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and again, and I want to clarify that I know that a majority of, of the Christians, like, choose not to look at that or... Well, yeah. I mean, did you know the Bible says there is no God? No. I mean, it actually just says there is no God. Really? Yeah. What's the context behind that? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> so it says, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. Okay. So... So my point is, yeah, context is really important. Yeah. Not just... Not just the context of the passage mm -hmm. that the verse is by that the verse is found in right but well the context within the whole book who's the audience they're speaking to oh, okay yeah. um who was the person speaking um talking about samson that's on my mind <laughs> um his you know like he he tells lies okay okay now he's supposed to be a he was actually listed in the New Testament as one of those great heroes of faith of the Old Testament. Okay. Does that does that mean that he that, that lying is promoted? You right. know, yeah. it's okay to lie. Sure. <laughs> um, so, and then he's a very violent person. He killed a lot of people. That sort of thing. Right. So, yeah. So, I believe the Bible is God's word. And what I mean by that, as a Christian, is that everything written in it is what God wanted to be written. Okay. That doesn't mean everything written in it is approved by God. Oh, okay. Interesting. Like, everything, you know, so so uh, can I learn from bad examples in history? Yeah. Yes. I can, and so I can read about these great people of faith who were flawed people nonetheless. Right. And made mistakes and what happened as a result. Yeah. Uh, so, for example, there's King David, uh, I don't know if you're aware Hi, of, yeah. um, like he was called by God, a man after God's own heart. Right. In other words, he was like as close to God as anybody, and yet he was, uh, he committed murder, right. he committed adultery, um, you know, betrayal, things like that. Uh, not on a regular basis, but, but I mean, in period. He, yeah, yeah, he had a, he definitely had a, uh, a lapse. He was a sin <laughs> sinful man. Yes. Yeah, so... <laughs> So that doesn't mean it approves of murder, you know. Right. So people, yes, definitely. One of the first things, I mean, it talks about the reality of, of a devil, Satan. Mm -hmm. And one of the first things he does is he twists God's word against Adam and Eve. Yeah. And he gets them to question, did God really say that? You know? Right. Like, that's the, one of the first things out of his mouth. Did God really say that? And so... Yeah, so it definitely takes 
a lot a lot of it a person has it, it's a huge collection of books yeah right yeah and you're gonna find it saying anything in there that you you, you can use it to get it to say right, anything right right because it it's say. been so written by so many people yeah for so long so seek and ye shall find obviously. and and then I'm not a Jewish person Neither but you I. know the the Jew Jewish nation was chosen by God to be you know the ones through whom the, Jesus would come the Savior you know the Messiah would right. come through this this group of people and and all through the Old Testament they're used as the example of what happens when they follow God and what happens when they follow idols other okay. gods yeah. you know and what happens when they put their trust in him and how one every generation has to renew their you know relationship with God it doesn't just happen because your grandparents or whatever yeah I mean there's so many lessons to be learned um, and like I say we learn from their mistakes as well as yes. their successes yeah so so I've you know I again and then when it makes promises to to the Jewish people I have to say you know what but I'm not Jewish <laughs> right. so those promises don't apply to me yeah you know and the threats, you know, are, are a little different too. So, do I have to follow Jewish laws? No, I don't. I'm not Jewish, right. you know. <laughs> and I didn't live back then, and it was a different age. And and um, a lot of things that we criticize now were improvements on, for example, the way women were treated. Mm -hmm. It was an improvement, and it was actually, um, what's the word for it? Um, trend, not trend setting. It was, well, it, a great advance. Yeah, um, so you're so kind of saying uh, a negative depiction of somebody in the Bible is God's way of saying, let's correct this. Yeah, well, yeah, there's a lot of lessons to be learned from okay. it. Yeah, definitely. Okay. And, and even like David and man after God of his own heart, we learn definitely from his errors. Interesting. His okay. sins, you know. So, so yeah, so uh, critics like to take the Bible way out of context and manipulate it in ways that make it look bad. Right. We can do that with our daily newspaper, yeah. with anybody, right. any politician. Uh, you know, so pretty much have to read it for yourself and, and find good people that teach it that um, are consistent as far as have, have demonstrated a consistency through their life of being committed to it. Yeah. You yeah. Know? So there are definitely uh, like atheist talking points, for, you know, skeptical talking points that people keep going back to. Right. I I really don't like um, like what I what I kept mentioning about Neil deGrasse Tyson, like this like very atheological, like scientific look on the universe of like God doesn't exist because humans have evolved, yada yada. And like yeah. I like I said earlier, I I I found my own way to put God into that understanding. So it's like I. To me, a lot of those like atheological, scientific points fall apart. A lot of the more uh, societal, moral ones. That's what I. That's what I struggle with today. Yeah. Another one is the idea of like when the second coming of Jesus comes, um, non-Christians will be. And again, this might be another one of those out of context things, but uh, the Bible, in its own way, says that like you know anybody who's not a follower of Jesus is gonna get punished and die. Yeah. I have a hard time understanding, uh, you know, agreeing with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, even when we do die, it talks, there's a, there's a judgment day and... Yeah, right. And, and the difference between... I don't know. Um, I mean, real quickly, there is, there is kind of a key that helps you understand the whole Bible, and that is that in the very beginning... Well, number one, man was created in God's image, so we have a special relationship with God. Right. It's different from animals, and we should treat everyone with, you know, great respect and dignity because they're fellow creatures created by God, right? Yeah. But, um, but then, if in the third chapter of Genesis, it says that man, Adam and Eve, rebelled against God, and that everyone now has this knowledge of good and evil like we all have a moral conscience it's given by god and we break it yeah and that's you know if you look around the world it's true you know oh, yeah yeah it doesn't matter if they're atheist or religious or whatever everyone has a sense of right and wrong that they can't even keep 
Yeah. Like if we if we think if it's just our sense of right and wrong, then why can't we keep it? You know, but no, it's more like an inner referee in our brain that we argue with, you right. know, and it's separate <laughs> from ourselves. Yeah. And that says that's God's law in our hearts, you know. Um, people can become hardened to it and stop listening to it. So, you know, there are psychopaths out there in yeah. different circumstances. But for the most part, everybody has this moral conscience and we're all trying to kind of justify our existence. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to we're trying to prove that we're good people. Well, who are we trying to prove it to, yeah, you know? Yeah. And so we know that we're gonna be held accountable someday, you know? Right. The, the most common thing I hear from atheists is, I don't need the threat of hell or the reward of heaven to be a good person. I'm just a good person because it's the right thing to do. Yeah. And I'm, it's like, well, why are you so interested in being good? <laughs> Well, it's because that's interesting. You know, that's interesting. Psychologically, you know, there's someone that's going to hold us accountable. Right. And I found that at least the people that I know, a lot of these atheists were raised Christian. Yeah. And as much as well, they, the most outspoken ones, I find are. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Because they're they feel the need to prove. yeah to justify themselves every which way. Yes. And 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 I find that like Christian beliefs are so hard to shake. And I think once you do. Then, well, know. everything uh, an atheist, like usually atheists will have a lot of um, criticisms of Christianity or Christians. Mm -hmm. The very moral foundation for their criticisms is Christian. Yeah. So, right. <laughs> you know, what yeah. other system are you going to use? Yeah. You know, um, I mean, if we use evolution, for example, okay, why don't we criticize people for not, you know, believing the strong survive, you know? Yeah. Might makes right. Right. You know, why don't we use that? You know, if you're so committed to That's evolution, yeah. Yeah. you know, let's let's say that, uh, you know, the most moral person is the one who goes out there and kills everyone who's weaker <laughs> than themselves, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, I, you know, and then they apply evolution to social behavior, too. So they yeah. say that, you know, the people that survive are the ones who get along with everybody. You know, so there's ways around that, but <laughs> what I'm just saying... So it's interesting. It's a lot of. It sounds like you're asking good questions. Yeah. No. I. I. I really like the, these kinds of conversations. Like a deep dive into. Yeah. Philosophy and uh, theology and topics like this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I. Um. I would really encourage you to read the Bible. Okay. Now the whole Bible is huge. Yes. And there are parts that are easier to understand. Um, you haven't read much at all on your own? Or? Not on my own, no. Yeah. I would say, like, really concentrate on the life and teachings of Christ, you know? So, okay. like, you've got the Old Testament, which is almost all Jewish history right, and everything. Right, right. And then you've got the New Testament, which begins with the four Gospels, which are looking at Jesus' life and teachings all from... It's kind of like... The way I look at it is, like, if you saw an accident in the intersection... Mm -hmm. You might have people on all four corners looking at it, and yeah, they will they tell you different things because yeah. they have different perspectives. Yeah, right. And that's kind of what, that's why they have four Gospels. They're looking at Jesus' life yeah. from different angles. Right. And so, so a lot of the stories are the same, but there's like slight twists. Right, and, and uh, like, uh, like I mentioned how I'm named after the book of Luke in the Bible. Yeah. Christmas is also depicted in the book of Matthew. And so I asked my parents, why my name, why aren't I named Matthew? And the reason they gave was because, well, the version of Jesus' birth as depicted in Luke was also depicted in this one movie we like. <laughs> so Which is probably a um, Merry Christmas, Charlie Brown. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was either that or the, little, the one that the, Linus uh, right. It was either from. that or the Little Drummer Boy. Oh, okay. I don't remember what they said, but like, yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah, um, Luke was. Uh, he was called the doctor and a historian. Yeah. And so most scholars believe, Bible scholars believe that he, he went around and interviewed people. As a historian, he didn't just, you know, go by what he heard people said. He went and talked to them. Okay. And so he was actually paid by um, this really rich guy, Theophilus or something like that, but uh, to go around and conduct historical research. 
and that's how he put the book of Luke together and then the book of Acts, which is the first one after the Gospels. Okay. So it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and then Acts, and that's the actions or the acts of the apostles. Okay. So what did they do after Jesus died and rose again? How did they go out starting churches and who did what and said what? Luke went and researched all that and wrote up that history of okay. the early church. So that's the that's your namesake. Yeah. No. Yeah. Definitely. You know. <laughs> so I could turn this off, and um, uh, I'm going to give you something I think you'll find interesting to read. Okay. So, all right. Okay.